Okay, I am going to show you guys how to build one of these great shaper fences. This is very easy to do. It does take just a little bit of time, but there's nothing crazy about these. So you, you can see there's variations of them. This particular one has a couple differences um, compared to this one. One is this guy here has a hole for the mounting of it. So if I go here and I loosen this up, you'll see this is just a hole. Now that hole is a little bit bigger than the bolt. So there's actually some play so I can move it a little bit. Another thing is you'll notice this opening here, that's actually made for the feed, the power feed. Now, um, this particular um, fence was made for another shaper. This shaper does not have the power feed um, bolts for the power feed. So I just don't use the power feed on this one. However, if you wanna make the power feed work on it, I'll just, I would put it right here, typically. So if you look at this one here, the power feed has this space right there and there's a notch cut out. Whereas this one's actually just a, you know, a box. Now, this is where you can kind of get creative with your own, you know, use your imagination to come up with your own solution for your particular uh, needs. But for my needs, um, you know, I have three shapers that I use and essentially the needs for each shaper is a little bit different. Um, if you want to make a fence specific for your needs, like for instance, um, if you want to make it specifically for a raised panel cutter, then um, this would be exactly what I would do. I wouldn't touch a thing. If you can see, this guy is one quarter inch uh, plywood. There's a notch in it, and I'm going to take all this out so you can see. What I recommend is having a adjustable slot. So if you'll notice on this guy here, I made an adjustable slot. And this is really important because when you're using these kind of bits, like that, that right there, that shaper cutter, that thing um, is adjustable because there's so many different profiles you can make with it. So I wanted the fence to be adjustable. So I made this completely adjustable. But as you can see, looking down in there, you can see that center cutout there, and it basically wraps the profile that I am using. I'm gonna go ahead and take this fence off. Now, you'll notice there's a couple things. This is actually a double fence. Now, what that means is that I've got two parts that come down, and they're separated by spacers. Now, you could use plastic shims like, um, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of times you'll get shims that uh, uh, are for different applications, um, but they're usually nylon. Um, so this, this gives me flexibility. So let me kind of show you the profile that I'm doing with this knife. Okay, so this is just a sample that I have here. This is the profile that I'm cutting with this particular knife. Okay, so this is a multi-profile cutter and... This is the profile. So it's going to literally be sitting down there like that. And now I've got that part there sitting on it. And then what I do is I raise this up because I'm gonna be profiling this whole edge. So it's gonna be like that, raised up above, just enough that it clears the workpiece that I'm using. Their board, except there's no, you know, it's a, it's a hold down, right? Just like my panel raising one, it's the same thing. So that's gonna hold that down there. This one, I mean, this guy is gonna hold it like that. So when it goes through, it's gonna have support like that. All I have to do is get this guy set up and I don't really have to worry about that spinning shaper knife in there because it's completely concealed. So whether or not you build a double fence like this or if it's just a single fence, like this one, right? This is just a single fence. This drops down on the workpiece and you saw me use that to make the raised panels. 
Um, this works perfectly for this. Excellent. I mean, absolutely. Um, if you want to make one of these, uh, I would suggest go ahead and start with this one and then maybe work your way up to this guy. It's a little bit more advanced with the, um, you know, the usage of it, but it's, you know, very, very simple and straightforward. Very efficient dust collection. Even with modest amount of, of airflow, you get really good dust collection. So you don't have to go crazy and, you know, have a massive dust collector. You're going to pull wood chips pretty nicely with this guy. And we're going to um, build one based right off of this guy. And um, you can, you know, like I said, you can utilize the double fence or you can just do a, one single fence. So if you want to use solid wood, obviously, um, go ahead. I would recommend using, um, if you can, anything that's um, at least an inch thick. Okay, so just did the measurements and I sketched this out for you. Okay, so basically what I did was I just went ahead and, and measured this entire thing and make this, I'm gonna make this exactly the same as this one here. It's, um, 24 and a half inches wide is how wide the base is. And then the actual body of the, the box here, that is 10 and 7 eighths wide. Now that's going to be dependent on, you know, again, your setup, the thickness of your material. But my material is one inch thick, roughly a little less. But I'm going to make this piece right here eight and a half inches wide. So that's going to be my internal size, eight and a half. And that's probably the most important part to me is to be able to have that space inside there. So all my um, fences are that same size inside. So eight and a half. And the height of it is five inches tall. And that's from the bottom of the box. The base, the actual bot, the, the um, platform that the box sits on is a half inch thick. So your half inch thick um, base is going to be underneath the box. So the overall height is going to be five and one half inches. So basically I'm going to use a four inch diameter hole saw and that's going to be the same hole saw that I'm going to use for the port for the um, for the first part of this job, I'm going to go ahead and make these sides and the back. So I'm going to go ahead and rip these at five inches. So those are going to be all my parts and I'm going to go ahead and cut these and I'll get back to you after I'm done. those parts cut to length we can work on the base so what we need to do is notch out those sides and that's going to be optional if you have a, a power feed um, these slots need to be drilled or uh, routed and then this has to be drilled so um, that's what I'm going to do now we'll get started okay so I'm just going to go off my drawing here and to start off I'm gonna go five and a quarter from the edge and that's gonna to be to the center point. And that's gonna be where my tapped holes are that I made on my shaper. Your holes are gonna be in a different location, probably. Um, or you could do it just like this and then take this location and then use that to drill your uh, holes in your uh, shaper. So if, that's, if you don't have any holes in your shaper, I would recommend doing that. Just, it's gonna be a lot simpler for you. Um, to do it this way and then mark on the shaper where these slots are so that you could put a perfectly uh, placed hole there. Now, remember, these are going to be half inch um, wide slots, so they're a little bit bigger than the actual bolts. Five and a quarter. Now, um, the reason I'm doing this before I'm doing my... Um, the cut the, the notches is that when I shape this, it's going to be much easier to shape this piece uh, with the um, slots already in them than afterwards. 
So you want to go ahead and put the slots in first. And now you want to go in um, seven eighths of an inch from the front edge. The reason it's seven eighths is because I want to maintain um, rigidity here. And also if you put a fender washer on, that washer might be kind of large. I want to go three inches in from that. So seven eighths plus three is essentially what? That's three and seven eighths. So let's set that three and seven eighths. And that's going to be the end point. Now, double check that so you come in from the other side and just make sure that that's 12 and a quarter. And if they are even, we're good. Um, mark for my hole saw. If you have a um, template with circles, you can also use that. But I'm actually going to be using the um, four and a quarter to the very end right there. Is I'm going to measure from that point. I'm going to measure out over half that distance, so two inches or two and a sixteenth, I think it's four and an eighth. Okay. okay, so now when I drill from there, it'll be perfectly placed and then it'll be perfectly centered and then I can finish it up with my jigsaw. Do these guys first and then we'll do this after. Um, sometimes I like to use rulers uh, like this versus tape measures and squares. So from the center point, I'm gonna go Seven and three thirty seconds. Now from that point, I'm going to go, actually, let me do this right here. Seven and three thirty seconds again, right there. Okay. So that distance right there should be 14 and three sixteen. So let me burn an inch. We find out what that is. So it should be 15 and 3.30 seconds. All right, that's perfect right there. Now, what does that mean for the end? Instead of five and a quarter, like I actually had said, I'm just gonna come in here about five and 3 sixteenths, just a little wide of that. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put down the 7 8 stop as well. You have with your table. I'm actually going to go a little longer than my original one. Um, I'm actually going to go five inches from the uh, uh, from the face here. Stopping point and. Um, this area here, certainly I could go a little bit longer as well um, if I wanted to have a little bit more movement. So um, I might actually bring that up just a little bit also. So I'm gonna go another half inch. Okay, so a half inch, that's gonna be my end. And that's gonna make this two and a sixteenth right there. Okay. All right, so that's going to be my um, center point of, of where I'm actually going to drill that. If you have to make plunges into wood, a lot of times you go with a straight bit, but try this. This is a half inch fluting bit. Um, so essentially this, if you're going to make like flutes and like pilasters or something, uh, these actually do really well um, cutting uh, and uh, when you plunge because they're actually designed to plunge. And one thing that's nice about using this is that it's got a center point that's really easy to see. Well, there's a little line right there and it is now making it so easy for me to see that center. So take the router fence and just move it up till you get to that line. That's right on the money. Okay. Um, sometimes when you look from other angles, it looks different, but all right, that looks good. So what I'll do is I'll plunge this down and then I'll back up to this spot here and I'll just come across until I reach my stopping point, which is right there. And then I'll do the same, this one, I'll plunge this down and there you go. 
Now, if you want to kind of make it a little bit simpler, you can take the, um, only because it, sometimes it's nice to know where that uh, cutting is going to start happening. So if you take the fence and line it up with the cutting edge, just like that, lock this down. Now I know that that is in line with the flute, so I know that it's going to be perfect and come across here and you notice I have this rotated so that it's in the um, nine o'clock and three o'clock position. You don't want it in this position because that's not going to give you the right <clears throat> uh, starting point. Yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be totally exact, but it's, you know, pretty darn close there. So now when that, when you plunge down, you have that line right there to reference off that fence. And so you can keep it in line perfectly. The same thing goes here. When you plunge this down, you could do that same thing. So you can take this line and come on over. All right, so this guy's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hearing protection on. Okay, so you can see right there, looks real good. And really clean, that's what's nice about that. You don't get that punch out like you do with a square, um, regular straight bit. Sometimes when you punch out that bit, it'll actually pull or push out the wood and chip out the top. Sometimes it happens. So those fluting bits, they don't do it that way because they're actually rounded. So as it comes up, it's coming up from the middle and then it's cutting away slowly to the edge. So you get an absolutely perfectly crisply clean, no chip out. And I can see the center of the bit really well so that my groove is perfectly centered. So try that next time you um, need to make this kind of a groove. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this 408 bit. And uh, actually I have a, um, a four inch, right? But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, four and one eighth. Hole saw. So this, in fact, since not everybody has a drill press, I figured I would show you how to do it with a drill. Um, you don't need a drill press to do this kind of a job. So what I like to do in, in this situation, because I can't really see that and I want to make sure that it's perfectly in that spot, um, I want actually going to put a little bit of a, a hole there. And even with this, it's hard sometimes. Okay, that's it. Now I can find that spot really easily if you want. However you, however big you make this, remember, that's how big this opening is gonna be. And although you may be using a six inch um, a diameter um, panel razor, you don't need to have a six inch opening here because that's just gonna make this, the bigger, the bigger opening is going to be less safe. All right, just make sure that when you do this, you um, have plenty of clearance on the backside and there's nothing that's going to be cut as you're doing this. And put it on low speed. And uh, that's it. So I have support back there. I have support here. I have support here. This piece is uh, not so thick, so you definitely can move um, if you push too hard. I'm just gonna let the drill do the work. And I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy over and get it from the back side so I don't tear this side out.
That looks really good. You see that? Now what I'll do is I'll just sand this and then I'll um, chamfer this whole thing. This down and make sure that it's blended nicely just because I'm a little bit anal that way. But uh, when I chamfer it, I want that to be a nice clean chamfer. And if there's a bump at all, you know, where it transitions from the circle to the straight, I don't want to see that bump. So. Right, that, that feels pretty darn good. So now I can go ahead and do the chamfer right there. Okay, I have my 45 degree chamfering bit in there with a bearing. Now, because this is a uh, radius, I'm gonna have to keep the bearing up on this. So it's gonna be a chamfer, but it's not gonna be a complete chamfer. It's just gonna be about like this. Something like that. And then, you know, we'll have a flat spot all the way around here. just to clean up these little burn marks and the uh, edge, just smooth it up a little bit. I'm just gonna sand it. But you know, when you're using this guy, let me tell you something, you're gonna have a lot of uh, wood chips flying in here. So it's gonna be sanded all by itself. That's the you could also clean it up with another pass with the chamfering bit to just go a little faster, but I went slow because I wanted to make sure that it was a nice, even cut and um, I didn't want this the um, wood wood dust to fly out the bottom edge nice and flat so that it, there's nothing that's gonna uh, go underneath the um, fence right no wood chips are gonna go under there so there's no spot for it to so if you round that over you're gonna have a you could have a, a void that will allow the wood chips to gather underneath there and I don't want that so Okay, now to mark out the notches, I'm gonna use my drawing. And again, this is my situation. So three and three quarter and um, four inches up. Okay, Let's go ahead and do that right there. So that's gonna be X'd out. Now you can use a bandsaw or a um, jigsaw to cut this. Obviously, if you use a bandsaw, it's gonna to have to be pretty big. So jigsaw is probably gonna be the best bet for this. Okay, now, because I have this battery-powered jigsaw, I can't control this with the power switch. So, because I have that IVAC um, switch, I'm gonna go ahead and manually flip it on, which is really cool if you don't have one. Check out my video on this. Flip this on, now I can use it without a tool. <laughs> Once I have it clamped, then I'm gonna go ahead and secure it with some screws. Sometimes when you do this kind of stuff, it can get a little squirrely. So uh, I like to use the clamps. Just Not gonna split this out, but just remember this stuff is prone to splitting even with pre-drilling, so don't crank it down too hard. Um, I'm trying to be even with my spacing on the holes, but let's be real, it's, it's you know, you can go overkill with this, so don't kill yourself. The harder you go, the more likely it's gonna split. Spot for so if you want to sand this, this is actually very flush, so I'm not even going to bother. 
but uh, I'm gonna be flush with that back edge. And this is just decorative, it doesn't matter, but I like to just maintain flushness on this back, and that's gonna give me that 16th lip in the front. It's just about seven, and that is just about seven. Okay, okay. so that's my mark. So what? 14, seven, so it's exactly, it's exactly square, so we're good. All right, I'm gonna take this, and I'm actually going to put a line down here. And this line is going to be for the placement of the screws. So I can take this piece off after I, so you can kind of see that line right there. All right, that's the interior line. So, we have a one inch piece, right? So that's a one inch thick part. So that would basically go to right there. So you can see that right there. That's it. So from here over is one inch. I'm gonna go right in the middle of that guy. So just as long as you kind of bring it in the middle, you'll be good to go. And I'm gonna do, I'll do three, keeping a good distance away from that front edge and the back edge or, uh, when I countersink it. All right. So it's just chamfering, I'm just countersinking it just a little bit, just to make sure that uh, piece has a nice tight fit when it goes on. So you see that, uh, that lip right there? I mean, that little tear out? That little tear out would be underneath the wood if you did it, if you just, pre-drilled or you went in from the bottom into the box. So that's why these are here, so that I don't have to worry about that happening. So now I can pre-drill this back, and just put a countersink there, making sure that the screw head is deeper than the wood. All right, that's really good. So now I can take this, and squeeze this together nice and tight. Now I'm gonna get inch and a quarter for that. Now once you have that tight, I can go ahead and remove the clamp, or I should say move it. This is really important that you pre-drill these. Okay, so you can see that, no splitting. Now that's uh, that's that 1 32nd strong that I was talking about. I left that right so that when I run my piece, it doesn't interfere with these one here. So to drill the hole, uh, it's probably gonna be best to use the, um, you wanna do this before you put the blocks in too. Uh, I'm gonna use the, the same uh, hole saw, but um, test it out with your fitting. Make sure it's the right size if it's not, you might be in trouble. So I'm gonna check mine and make sure it's the right size. B, you wanna be almost flush with this edge, which means you wanna literally almost kiss the bottom as you're drilling. So if you can, um, or just barely up, but you know, you don't want it to be too far up. It's not gonna be a killer, but it'll be nice if it's pretty close to that bottom edge. So um, two inches up. So it's a four inch hole, and I'm actually going to use my four inch hole saw, not my four and an eighth. The four and an eighth would be a little too large. And again, I already removed that screw that I used to fasten this. Now this is one inch, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. This is a sharper bit though, or a sharper hole saw but it's still gonna take a little bit of time, especially considering I can't, you know, go at it real hard the way that it is. Just bring it up a little bit at a time and um, wipe off anything that might be on here. Now I've sprayed this with my um, lubricant that I always use, so it's pretty slippery, but I always wanna take off any um, 
debris that's on here, right? Because if you get um, the wood dust, if this stuff starts to gum up and heat up, it just melts and then you're just gonna burn. You're not gonna do any cutting. So just come up, release that dust, and then go back. You can see it's pretty much flush with that bottom. That's really nice. Very nice. All right, and now I'm gonna... So you can see right there, it's a little bit, there's just a tiny bit of space, right? But it's enough to make it a little annoying. So take some duct tape, wrap it around a couple of times, whatever you want. Um, probably could use black too. Black is nice. You put this thing in, you want this to be nice and flush with this edge here, or that I wrote down. So three and a half inches is actually a little heavy and you'll see why. When you put this in, it's gonna kind of cover just barely that front edge right there. And that's it. That's gonna give you a very nice you know, ramp into the dust collection. So you're gonna have the same thing here. And look at how nice that is. All right, just make sure that there's no dust and you wanna make sure that this guy's all the way down, completely flat and it's flush here. There it is. Okay, I've got this fence or the base um, almost complete. Now, as I was doing this, I realized that my raised panel um, fence, this is the one that I have in my raised panel shaper. This one works absolutely perfect and the way that I inset this part here extends the, the, the hold down out, which is great for when you have your raised panels because when you put it in, it's further away on it. You see what happens? It puts pressure on the flat part and not on the void. So that's what's nice about this being set back or I should say inset, however you want to look at it. I thought to myself, you know what? I'm actually going to stop building it this way. And I'm gonna, because this one that I have already that's like this works perfectly and I'm gonna leave that. But I'm actually gonna make another one just like this. The reason I'm gonna do it like this is because I think this is simpler for people to do um, as the first kind of a, the first one they build. And if you want, you know, you know, you can continue to build this one just the way that it is, or you can do it this way. So the, the only difference I'm gonna do on the new one is actually I'm gonna take this part off. I'm gonna keep the base exactly the same. So I'm not gonna to touch the base. So that's gonna be different than this one since this is quarter inch. I'm actually going to use the half inch material for the base and I'm gonna change um, this because these have to be made longer I'm actually gonna move, make these uh, inch and three sixteenths. Um, so inch and three sixteenths, and I'm gonna do my extension here. So they're gonna come out just like this one does. So you're gonna see that change. So you, if you're making a um, workbench like this, or if you have a really big table like this, and you wanna have a little uh, place to store screws, I like to use this area. I kept it a little extra large so that I could get um, some you know, room for screws. That's what I use this spot for. It works great. Just a little note. All right, so now I can unscrew the sides. All right, so cool. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut two new ones. I'll be right back. I would rather it be a little bit set in because then I know I'm not gonna clip that as I run this piece through. So, you know, a 64th of an inch, that's all. So now that's my mark right there. And now if I take that and I square it up, And then, if you see what's going to happen there. So, uh, 11 and 5 eighths by 5 inches. That front is 7 eighths inch high by 1 and 5 eighths long. Okay? So, 1 and 5 eighths is my depth, and 7 eighths is my height. Set this at 7 eighths. And the uh, um, depth is gonna be one and five eighths for what I'm doing. Okay, so that's gonna be X'd out there. All right, so now you can see, let me show you. It's just barely set in piece of wood right it's going to be my panel go right by that without clipping it and continue on and here it won't hit that one either so they're both set in if they're so the first fence I made like this I nailed and I didn't glue but I put a lot of nails on and that's, you know, cool, but if you ever want to change it or whatever, it's hard. Oh, and whatever size hanger bolt you use, that's good. Okay, these are what I'm using. These are 5 sixteenths, and I was able to get 5 sixteenths um, uh, knobs for them. Hole. And I'm going to do that in scrap wood first. I'm just going to test the fit and make sure it's going to be good. So let me go ahead and drill it and see what happens. Now, okay, now you could sit here and spin this all day and you're probably not gonna get very far. So either take the knob that you got, thread it on, and it will go down until you get to about that, that part there where there's no threading. Or you could take, with the way I prefer it, is just take an actual, um, same size nut and put both on there and let them bottom each other out there, bottom out on each other. And now I can take this and drive it. So that seems really pretty good. Um, however, I can see just a tiny bit of basically just a hair of a crack that I want to look at my sight lines and make sure that I'm going down plumb because it's real easy to get skewed on this, right? One way or the other. But if you just continuously look as you're going down, you'll stay really good. And once it starts going down square, you'll be good. So I'm gonna start this. Check this way over here. Now, of course, if you're doing this in solid wood, it's gonna be a little bit more work getting those holes drilled, any of this stuff, if you're using solid wood, which is one of the reasons why I say, you know what, time's money, and the longer it takes you to do this, the less work you're doing. Now, of course, I'm using an impactor, but you don't have to use an impactor if you don't have one. I just love these things. That's 
good. Okay, now I can measure the amount that it's protruding and make sure it's the same. Yeah, that was almost identical. So I might go deeper than that, but you know what? I don't need to, so I'm just gonna leave it. Okay. I'm gonna go six inches tall, and whatever the width of your um, base is. Yeah. So this one's 25 inches, so this matches exactly the length of that. So I'm gonna make this one 24 and a half. To figure out where you're gonna route the slots, you need to figure out how far. So if you go six and three quarters, and then you measure from the center, and just you know eyeball that center to the edge of the workpiece, however you like to do it. That's five eighths, a little light. So add that six and three quarters and then to five eighths to that. So you come over here from this far edge and go over six and three quarters and then add five eighths to that. So we got seven and three eighths. I'm gonna do, rather than doing that from both sides, you wanna just double check and make sure that the center points are gonna be the same. So what you can do is go all the way up there and get that measurement. And that is nine and three quarters exactly. So I know that center to center, that's nine and three quarters. What I like to do is burn an inch. So go 10 and three quarters, put it right there. And now come straight over and put a mark at one inch. And that's where that mark is right there. So now we know that is where those slots need to be. The best thing you could do is just give yourself plenty of extra room because you never know what you're gonna do. So if you see here, if you come up you know, that far, you can kind of get an idea of how far down you should go, right? Give yourself plenty of room and maybe, you want, maybe that's where you wanna stop. And then obviously you can't go, um, you know, you're gonna to be touching the work surface if you go any farther. So that's gonna be basically your stopping point. Might as well just stop right there. And that's it. So now we can take that, that guy right there and move it all the way over. Okay, so now I've got my slots right there. And that helps visually to see that. So that guy right there is going to be cut. In order to route this slot, I have to, Come in blind because we're going to be going here, right? So this has to be removed. So it's not going to be through cut. I'm going to have to plunge down just like this and work it down until it goes flat to the table. And then I'm going to back it up till I get to my line right there. However, this is a one inch cutting depth. Um, Bit. Now that's a problem because my piece is one inch thick. So I really can't utilize this one pass method. I'm going to have to do two passes and I'm going to do a basically like a half or a little more the first pass and then I'll raise it up and I'll finish it off. To push this through, I could probably do this okay, but if you feel comfortable, get a push block and then just kind of hold it kind of like you do with um, rails and styles. Basically, this is a, uh, a plywood cutting bit, so it's essentially a, a 30 second under a half inch. switch to a bulldoze bit and I'm going to run the top. Okay, I have a big bullnose bit in here. Now I'm going to take my workpiece and I'm going to show you a little tip. 
it's just a little bit of a trick. If you want to get your bull nose centered on your workpiece, it's actually kind of difficult to do if you think about it, like measuring and all that stuff. It's actually a little bit of a trick, you know, pain to do this. What I found is that if you take your uh, workpiece and put it in and you get it to a point where you're um, touching both the top and the bottom knife. So if you're touching both top and bottom knives, you're centered. You see how that top is not touching, but the bottom is? So I'm, I'm not centered. So you want to make sure that that's centered, if that's what you're going for. Uh, obviously, if you're not, it's, it's a moot point, but... All right, so we'll come here. You can see, this is where my cutting edge is, so I need to bring this fence all the way up there. And it doesn't matter if I'm straight or anything, you know, it doesn't matter. All I want to do is make sure that my cutting edge is going to be good and that my fence is not going to be hitting, right? I don't want to hit that. Okay, now you can see that that guy is centered very nicely. And I'll tell you what, um, no, no problem there. Didn't need any adjustment. And I mean, if it's not like dead center, like perfect, perfect, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but that thing looks really good. Um, and what I did was I, with the fence, you saw me um, adjusting it. What happens is if you have too much depth, you're gonna have a snipe at the end. And snipe is going to look like that, okay? That's what snipe is. So as you run this piece through, you're going you're gonna to run it through, and then you're taking too much material off, so after it gets to the very end, there's no support here. So it just it drops in, and then it gets snipe. So that's why there's snipe, and you can see that line right there. That's evidence of snipe. So what you can do, if you have snipe, a situation... What you could do is run it again, even with the same setting. And oftentimes, because that guy's already been sniped, it'll actually clean itself up and you won't even have that snipe there anymore. Okay, so these are mine and I went ahead and got these. And again, they're exactly the same as some of the other ones, except they're, um, they're uh, 5 sixteenths and not 3 eighths. So this is pretty cool. Now also notice that that depth is really good. Um, now oftentimes I have a washer in there, but really I don't even think you need a washer um, because of the, the, it's almost like these things have their own washer. Look at how big that surface is. So I don't think this needs a washer at all. Okay, so this is the stuff that I use and I actually have this left over from the last time, which is cool. Um, you know, it's just basically acrylic, uh, 18 by 24 sheet, 10 times stronger than glass, which is cool. Non-yellowing, which is also cool. Um, and when I cut this it, on the table saw, it cuts really nicely. So I, I just use a regular blade. I don't have to use anything fancy. All right, I'm gonna cut this. And I'm gonna use dust collection, of course. But whenever you cut this kind of stuff, um, Definitely use dust collection. So that's just a ripping blade, by the way. And of course, leave the protective film on and as you're working with it so it doesn't scratch it. But when you get it to this point and you're gonna start you know, putting it on there, you're definitely gonna want the uh, film off because you don't want to put the film on when it's, you know, the underside. And when you drill through that, obviously you're going to be drilling through the film and then you can just peel it off after the screws are on. All right, I peeled off that bottom side, made sure the top is nice and clean. 
and just set this guy on here. And I have this piece here just to keep it so that it's nice and tight. Okay, this is kind of arbitrary, but I, I like to uh, I like to just make these so that they're relatively evenly spaced. I came in from the front and the back an inch and a quarter, so it won't split out any material, you know, just to be on the safe side. And then what I did, I took that distance and I just took my tape measure, my ruler, and I measured it out. So that was about nine and an eighth. So I figured, okay, well then that's that works out good because if I go three, three, and three, that's my spacing right there. So about three inches um, plus about a 30 second. So three and a 30 second, three and a 30 second, and then, then I get to that last point for the um, dust collection hose. Okay, I've got my square set up to an inch, uh, to half of an inch and three sixteenths, which is, that's inch and three for that guy. And I'm just gonna put the mark right there. This is a 3 seconds drill bit. And then I'm gonna take, just to lock this guy in, just while I'm working on this, I don't want it to shift. I'm just gonna put that screw just like that, just to keep this thing from shifting since I don't have a clamp on it or anything. And then I'll drill this other one and I'll do the same thing. I'll just barely put it in. That's it. Take it over to the shaper and see what it looks like. You don't already have a um, hole in your table. You're going to have to tap one, right? So that's something that you don't, you know, they're not going to, the tables aren't going to have holes for you, most likely, unless you bought a pre-owned one. Nothing crazy about this. All you're doing is you're, you're taking it and you're trying to figure out where your cutting edge is going to be. So if you're, um, I've got these two holes centered uh, right there, and that gives me the ability to move it all the way back and all the way forward. And again, um, depending on your, um, your cutter head, you can change it. But I don't see how there could ever be an a possibility of me not having a, the right spot for that considering I made the slots. We made these slots longer uh, because the original one was, they were a little bit shorter and I made this spot bigger. So it gives me more room to move this. But again, this is probably never gonna be done. It's just flexibility. So once you have the location, all you do is you take your, your Sharpie, right? Right? And you know what? And this is a good time for, for wanting it to be square to the, you know, parallel with your um, miter slot. So just take a, a, a tape measure and measure that so that you know it's, it's straight and square. And then put a mark where you want the hole to be with a Sharpie. Once you have that mark, you can remove this. And then if you don't already know how to tap a hole, you need to obviously figure out how to do that. Um, so this is a great um, fence to have and it's a safe fence. Um, but let's do this. Let's go ahead and do the reveal because when I take this off, it's like magically, it's like, oh man, it looks so cool. Oh yeah, that 
that looks cool, man. And of course, when you um, do that, oftentimes what I'd like to do is um, just sand this because if there's any layout marks or any notes on it, um, and then I'll obviously sand this as well, make it nice and smooth. But this guy is ready to work. So if you can imagine that being the shell piece we're routing. So it's gonna be like that. It's gonna go in and there you go. Now, if you haven't seen the video where I talked about the shaper and the router for raised panels, check that one out, but I'm sure most of you have. But if not, check it out. This is um, basically that same fence, but with a little modification. And if you haven't ever, you know, felt like you were comfortable with the um, shaper because you were a little bit nervous about using it, uh, I can understand they're very intimidating uh, machines. Oh yeah. All right, I just drove that screw right in there and this guy is complete. Look at that. It's a beauty. 